Uh, my question has to do with uh, Acts chapter 3 and uh, like verses 19 through 21. I'd just like to get your uh, your understanding of uh, like as Peter's preaching and you know telling them about the times of refreshing that come as they come into Jesus Christ. And then uh, he makes a statement in uh, verse 21 about Jesus, whom heaven must receive until the times of restoration of all things, which God spoke by the mouth of all his holy prophets. And I was just wondering what your take is on the times of restoration. Does that tie in with uh, new heavens and a new earth? Uh, what what exactly do you think uh, you know Peter was announcing there as, as their hope? Well, that has been disputed. P- you know, Peter's words there do not fit neatly into any of the other eschatological passages in the Bible, so we kind of have to shoehorn them in to them. So, now, we mentioned Origen in our last call. Origen took that reference to the restoration of all things, and he, he based uh, upon that and some other scriptures his views of, uh, of universalism. He thought that God's going to restore everything to himself, every sinner, uh, even the devil and the demons would be eventually converted and redeemed and restored to God. Of course, uh, that, that's one of the views that was condemned by the later church. But um, I have always understood it, as you suggested, that what, God, what God's going to restore is all that has uh, you know, the world. They, uh, Paul talks about in Romans chapter 8, uh, around verse 29 or so, I think. I'm not. No, no, no. Earlier, so probably around verse 25 or 26. I'm not looking at it right now. But Paul said that uh, the the creation itself is going to be delivered from the bondage of decay uh, that it's been subjected to, and it's looking with the groaning and travailing, waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God, uh, which will take place when Jesus comes back and redeems our bodies in resurrection. So I think that the restoration of all things is the restoration of the fallen world and the fallen universe, the fallen creation, and also our own uh, bodies, our own physical condition will be restored to their immortal state that they should have had if we had not fallen. That's what I think. Now, there's other views about that. Yeah, yeah, I had, uh, that's pretty much what I had thought too, but I hadn't really heard that too much as far as, it seems like the, uh, the concept that, that's preached a lot of times about heaven is kind of ambiguous, where I think, you know, with, if that's what Peter's talking about right there, I mean, that's like a tangible hope, uh, not, uh, you know, not some ambiguous thing that we don't know much about, but we just, you know, trust that it's going to be good. Uh, it's almost like we could look back to the Garden of Eden and uh, God's original creation before the fall and say that's, you know, that's what God's going to do again, and that's what we're qualified to do in Christ. And it just seems well, that's, like that's right. This, Jesus said, "Jesus said, blessed are the meek; they shall inherit the earth." And you know, the Bible doesn't anywhere say that people are going to live in heaven forever. The Bible does say, I believe, that if I die as a Christian. I will go to heaven, but that's only until the resurrection. That's only until Jesus comes back. You know, I have to be somewhere. Yeah. So, you know, between the time I die and the time that Jesus comes back and raises the dead, I believe that my spirit goes to be with God in heaven. But I don't stay there forever because even Jesus isn't going to stay there forever. As Peter's words you quoted say, you know, the heavens must receive him until the time of the restoration of all things. So... Uh, you know, he's only in heaven until it's time for him to come back here. Then he's going to make a new heavens and new earth. And there's going to be a new Jerusalem on the new earth. And he's going to live with us there. And that's our eternal home, I believe. So what I, I agree with you. I think that the Garden of Eden shows us that God intended for people to live forever in a perfect world, in perfect bodies. And uh, that was interrupted by sin and death. And so for the past 6,000 years, there's been sin and death interrupting really what God had in mind uh, for people. So when Jesus comes back, he's going to restore what God had in mind in the first place, a perfect world, perfect people, perfect bodies, perfect paradise. And it's uh, very tangible. That's why there's going to be a resurrection of the body. 
See, some people think, well, if you go to heaven when you die, then what's the point of having a resurrection later on? Well, because living as a disembodied spirit in heaven is never what God had in mind. Right, right. Well, thanks for watching. That's not God's idea of our permanent. Okay, well, it sounds like you gave the answer yourself, and I agree with you.